consultants and I'm going to today guide you through simple steps to create a safe space at home or at the office and improve your sleep. But before starting, uh, so that's what we'll be looking at today, a little bit introduction about myself to tell you why I'm here and what I'm doing. Understanding 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6G, what are the different types of radiation that we are exposed to today? A new infrastructure and what about the health impact? And the remedial solution to improve our environment and sleep pattern. So, first of all, I would like to say that to summarize a little bit what everybody said before, uh, we are vibrational beings. We vibrate, we resonate with everything around us, with our environment, with the people we encounter. And even if sometimes we are in a place where we don't want to be in that place, or where we are forced to be, for a reason or for another, we're actually here for a reason, because we have a resonance. So I have been, uh, well, I worked for 21 years in the medicine uh, regulation field. I'm not a doctor, just to let you know, but I uh, had the possibility to do some auditing in this field, and that helped me to have a different eye to open the eyes, as we can say. And following that, I actually learned different holistic therapies. So I've um, trained as a hypnotherapist, a past life therapist, a life between life therapist, and uh, as a cranial sacral therapist. I also was interested very much in feng shui and learned about feng shui and how now I really from the bottom of my heart help ooh, <laughs> people to feel well uh, and to have a general well-being understanding the environment where we are but also understanding the interference we are having that could actually change our frequency, our vibration. So, so we are in a world that is changing at a fast pace, as you know, <laughs> and we need to understand how this technology is going to change everything we, are, um, we have in our life. So in 30 years, we have had from 91, 1991 to 2021, really uh, an increasing change in technology. Uh, so in 1991, started with the 2G where we have uh, an encrypted phone conversation, um, texting and SMS that changed our life. And that, that has been fantastic. In 2003, we had the 3G, uh, with mobi mobile internet access and the uh, wireless uh, internet access with video calls and, and mobile and TV technology. Then in 2010, uh, we had the 4G <laughs> happening into our life, and there we have all the gaming services, the video conferences, and again, today we have this amazing possibility to be in contact with people from all over the world, perhaps, uh, and uh, connecting, having a lot of connection, and that's fantastic. Uh, then in 2019, we have now the um, start of the 5G, uh, where we can download, we're going to be able to download very quickly things. Uh, we call that the Internet of Things. Uh, but obviously, this new technology involves also, also the change of our whole infrastructure. So that, we, that means having masks everywhere, uh, lampposts, uh, you probably notice that you have LED lamps that have started to be changed. 
Uh, it will be in the benches, in our bus stop, everywhere, <laughs> basically. And perhaps later with a much higher frequency um, that will be changed because soon we will go into 6G where uh, we will connect with the sea, with the lands, with the space. As you know, we have now uh, a launch of lots of satellites in the sky that we are connecting to. So that is very important to understand <coughs> that all of that obviously is, is creating a lot of positive things, but also it has an effect an effect on our well-being as well. So um, we have different types of radiation that we are being exposed to. And what we want really, it's uh, all these beautiful things that we are creating, us being um, happy, positive, creating a beautiful environment for ourselves. We want to keep that energy for ourselves. But we want to understand that radiation, man-made radiation and earth radiation, they have an impact on us. It's, it's very clear. They have an impact on us. And what we don't know <coughs> clearly is the cumulative effects that those radiations have. Before, 30 years ago, our children, they didn't have a, a mobile phone. They didn't have a tablet. They, they had none on that. So today we have we are in in, in a in, in a world that have all this uh, technology and we need to understand how it affects the biology of our body. Yes. So we have man-made radiation, which is the high frequency radiation. We have the uh, ELF called extremely low frequency radiation. We have the uh, low frequency radiation. We have the lights. And I um, want to mention that I've trained with GeoVital, which is an academy in Austria. Uh, it was a natural, uh, naturopathic clinic originally. And, uh, and it became uh, an academy who specialized in uh, and how to understand those radiations. Uh, it has been a really high opening for me, and I would like to, through EMF consulting, bring that knowledge to people so that they have an understanding in their own environment how it can change their life. So, sorry, coming back. So, we have extremely low frequency radiation, low frequency radiation, light. We have the as Jan said earlier on, the geopathic stress, which is the earth radiation. Uh, and the, it creates a magnetic field that, uh, from the earth that sometimes are distorted by water veins. We, we know that it's very uh, good to have water veins for the trees, for the plants to grow. But uh, it has also consequences because the water veins, when you have uh, uh, traces of elements like uh, the coppers or uh, um, salts, uh, irons that interact with those water veins, it creates a frictions. And that frictions actually create a, an ionization. And that ionization creates an energy which can be harmful for people. So we need to understand that because if you are in the bedroom and trying to sleep, yes, the uh, geopathic strike might not affect you for a, a short period of time, like Ian said, but if you sleep on it for a longer period of time, then you, you, you will have trouble. So we have curry lines, we have art mine lines as a ge geopathic stress, faulting lines, ground mixing, uh, ley lines, uh, so all of that, we are interacted with this different type of radiations. So where to find the high frequency radiations? Uh, obviously, all wireless devices that we have, cell towers that emit waves, because they can both receive and transmit through our routers, 
our Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, baby monitors, uh, car now with Bluetooth, some central lighting controls and heating uh, systems, so it's uh, all becoming wireless. Uh, what we forget is that all these devices have a cumulative effect when we use them at the same time. So this is very important and unfortunately we are at the beginning of this technology and we need to understand again how it interacts with the human body and the animals and the plants, the environment. So this has not been taken really into consideration and we need more studies. But for the moment, we just need to be a little bit more considerate of what we have at home. So we have the electric field. So people will say, oh, well, electric field. We've been living with electric field for years and years and it hasn't affected me. But actually, we are all different. We have some people have a thin, thinner skin. Uh, children, they are in the process of uh, development. We'll, we'll go back to it uh, at a, another time. But uh, because we are very different, it will affect us differently. So it's very important to understand that when you have wiring in the wall with voltage, then that emits an electric field. So it's, and it takes, it's, it's about two meters or, or six feet from where you are. Uh, so I don't want to be, to, to be too technical, but even if you have your, your electricity, which is switched off, it's actually, the voltage is still oscillating. So that's still creating an electric field, and that's important to understand. So yes, from the moment that you have uh, a cable in the, so in the wall socket and the light fitting, we have an electric field that goes from 50 to 60 hertz. Um, and that has an impact on the body. The body doesn't understand that. So we are managing, we are managing at the moment, but because of the cumulative effect, and I'm going to repeat that often because uh, this is something important, uh, we have more radiation than we've ever had before, right? So we need to, to look at that. So all the electric appliances, the cables, the laptop, um, all the, the wiring in the house. We have also the magnetic field. So that's also something that where, which is produced by the current flowing through the wire. Uh, so some electrical appliances and electrical devices and um, yes, so this is also, we, this is in milligauss for people uh, who want to build it more technical or in Tesla, um, yes. We probably have heard about dirty electricity. Uh, dirty electricity comes in many of our devices. Uh, and it's uh, start with the light dimmer switches, the computer, printer scanners, even the induction hubs. Um, solar panel, uh, which is very, for me it has been an eye opener, but solar panel can actually create a high amount of dirty electricity, but you have certain ground uh, that uh, can actually, uh, are much, much lower. So. But you have also some, uh, some uh, uh, solutions for the solar pa power uh, panel, and we can look at that later. I'm not going to go through the whole list, but all of this, uh, t the television, the cordless phone, uh, smart meters, uh, everything that is smart creates often a pulse modulated frequency, maybe not all, but um, certainly for the smart meters that emit and receive information at different time of the day, different time of the night, we don't know. Um, then the routers, blenders, hair dryers. Okay, so it causes spike or surge on the sine wave, known as harmonics and transients. Lights um, have to be... 
Oh, okay, very good. So the lights, it might sound a little bit uh, strange, but the light is actually in the spectrum of radiation. And um, some lights, like LED light actually, is an electromagnetic wave that travel through space and induce a magnetic field. So some people might react very strongly to the light and, and it sometimes we tend to forget that aspect because uh, it's not necessarily something that comes to our mind. But um, I can really recommend this book from Anna Levin called The Incandescent, where she explains how light has an impact on certain people, uh, particularly on people who are electrosensitive, but it might also develop even more now because of the cumulative effect of the radiation. So uh, we'll come to that. So we had uh, some studies where uh, found that LED radiation can cause ir irreversible damage to the retina in, in uh, 2012. Uh, so obviously the light can also create problem with the protein expression level resulting in severe cell dam damage again with the retina. And um, Diane, Diana said that uh, it's so, the, the, the radiation can have a, a, a certain impact on your eyes. Um, and Diana said uh, earlier on that the eyes were the connection between the heart and the brain. So we need to look after our, our eyes, certainly for, for everything, but it's, uh, it's also, our, I totally believe, <laughs> this connection between the heart and the brain. Um, so, yes, you can see there was a study by, uh, in 2014 as well, by the pharmaceutical university in Japan, and it was published on the damage of photoreceptor-derived cell in culture by light, uh, emitting diode-derived blue light, blue LED light. And blue LED light is, we have it everywhere. Uh, we have it in the street now, uh, massively. We have it on the television. We have it on our mobile. So, uh, this is becoming growing and growing and growing. I trust that there will be new technology that will be able to actually counteract the effects of that and there are already certain te technology that I will touch with you, Bay. Um, so yes, the Public Health England in 2018 uh, warned that high level of blue light in LED street lighting can be uncomfortable and are not unknown again to cause damage in the retina. Another study with the French Agency for Food, Environmental and Occupational Health and Safety warned of the phototoxic effect of blue light exposure, exposure including an increased risk of age-related macular degeneration. So why is it important to take into consideration these studies where we need more studies? <laughs> but because it affects obviously our eyes and other things in our body. And we want to be sure that we're not getting this degeneration because we are getting old, but because this is an environmental aspect um, of what we have in our life. When I prepare this presentation, <laughs> I, I don't know why, <laughs> let me like Diana, you said, um, but I have to speak about the light. Light is a spectrum, uh, is, a, is, a, is also a sound. So um, it affects a lot of things, particularly our circa circadian rhythm, um, and have an impact on our melatonin production, which is our happy hormones. So 
again, you want to be sure that what you are exposed yourself to, you really have a look at it because if you want to stay positive, you don't want to have this kind of interference, cumulative interference in, in where you are. <coughs> you, you want to balance it off, right? But again, some people will feel more affected, some people less affected, depending on each individual. Uh, some people uh, have also, uh, it has also seen that uh, it affects the skin, the heart rate, um, and people can be dizzy, have headaches, migraines, sleep disruption is an, in a, is an important factor as well. Um, so, some people have started to use this, um, you're probably aware about this blue light blocking glasses in the evening to actually uh, regulate the, that light. And they are kind of dark orange, reddish, and uh, they are using that also on the road when they drive uh, at night because of the uh, but because now you have LED lights uh, on, the, on the road. So uh, it's preparing the body for a deeper sleep. So that's uh, the spectrum of the, the, um, the electromagnetic spectrum of what we are exposed to. Uh, it's just to give you a, a general idea of uh, everything we, we have from the low frequency radiation, the radio frequency, the light, and the radioactivity. So all of this basically is part of the what we call non-ionizing radiation, and here ionizing radiation, the light that we use infrared radiation uh, and ultraviolet light. We have the X-ray, gamma cosmic ray as well. So as you can see, the, the, um, the radio frequency in, in this spectrum, you, you have the radio, the TV, the cell phone, the Wi-Fi. So this is very much present into our life. Yes, so talking about this new infrastructure that we have, it's important to speak about it because we have, as you may have noticed, an increasing number of LED lamp lamps in our streets. And that's to ac accommodate this new technology where if you see on uh, this lamp here, at the top, sometimes you will see a little spike. And that's an, uh, an, uh, that where it can emit and receive information. So the idea is at some point that will become um, a transmitter for whatever we have in our home. So, so yes, we have new routers and smartphones enabling this new 5G generations. Um, we have wireless uh, infrastructure now in hotels. We don't have the choice. Most of the hotels are equipped with, with wireless device or connection because people want to be connected. And that's great. We want to be connected. But we want to be safe as well. That it's not going to affect our health. So smart home business highways digitalized road on the M4. I don't know if anybody went to the M4. It's incredible. They are changing the whole structure of, of the road to become a digitalized road. So with a set of lampposts every 200 meters. Because we want to transport into, uh, uh, you know, having self-driving cars, uh, our currently being developed and everything will be wireless. The refrigerator, washing machine, milk cartons, airbrushes, um, everything will be connected wirelessly. 
So what does the science say about wireless radiation in children? And that's very important to know that the World, the World Health Organization uh, has classified the wireless radiofrequency radiation as a class 2B possible human carcinogen in 2011. So um, we know that cell and cordless bone has been linked to brain tumors. Um, so that's uh, th there's lots of studies. Um, some 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 studies might not be uh, recognized for other organizations, but it is. Some others are ongoing, so it's um, it's important to to actually look at these studies. There is um, an initiative called the Bioinitiative Report. And in this bioinitiative report, you have a lot of studies from sciences, scientists uh, that explain what happened with, the, with our exposure. In 2018, and that's also a very important fact, um, we found, the study found an impact on memory in teenagers who held cell phone to their head for just a year. Uh, it's, ex it's links to exposure to hyperactivity, behavioral problems, damaged sperm, altered brain development. <coughs> so if it has an impact on the memory in teenagers, what other impact can it have on other age categories? So that's um, about children, just a quick illustration on how the radiation impact on children from five years old to 10 years old and the adult. Here you see that the impact, it's the, um, it's the, the absorption is much higher for children of five years old than an adult. So we need to be more careful with our children uh, because they are at a stage where obviously they have a smaller head brain thinner, and they, the percentage of water volume is much greater. And we know that water conducts electricity. And if you, if you are using your mobile, just be considerate when you hold your mobile, because you might hold your mobile next to a child. And that is passive your exposure for the child. So um, there are the good resources for parents and school. Uh, in France, they have banned the wireless uh, in the nursery school, uh, which is very good, I think, in Israel as well. Um, and the Council of Europe warns about installing routers, routers in school and recommends 100 microwatt precautionary level in school, but how many schools are checking that it is actually happening? So the parents need to educate the school, or I don't know, but um, this is certainly something that uh, we need more awareness because now children, they have their tablets, their phones and everything, and we don't know what we are exposing them to. So more studies. Um, I think I, uh, I want to keep for giving you some solutions <laughs> because there are solutions. Um, but it's really understanding that those traditions can have also a neurological effect on us. So. It is important, and we want, again, to keep our positivity and our well-being. <laughs> but if we have interference, it will obviously interfere with what we are building. You know, whether we want to improve the energy in our house or the relationships or everything, if we have interference, it will disrupt the field of our positivity. So, oh, I think, 
So why should I care about radiations? Uh, we are daily exposed now, but it's invisible. We don't see it. We don't feel it. Some people do. Uh, more and more people do. Um, but again, we want to see the cumulative effects of the exposure. And we need to ask ourselves questions for this bombardment of radiation of, and short and long-term exposure. We need more studies. We are at the beginning of this technology. So pregnant women, is this affecting the development of an embryo? You know, babies and children, is this, is this affecting the development of the bone, the eyes, the hearings? The, our general health, how about our immune system? Our memory, brain fog. If we have interference going through our brain, it disconnects our neurons. How can you think clearly? So we are electrical beings. Our brain and heart is electrical. We are interacting with those radiation on a daily basis. What is the consequence on the animals, on the insect, on the nature, on the trees? Are we looking at that? Health impact, sorry, I'm a little bit focused on health, but it's important that we are not putting our symptoms into a box, but we are looking at these symptoms and say, okay, so the EMF radiation we are experiencing can create sleep dis disturbance, insomnia, fatigue, tiredness, headache, depression, heart, you know, tachycardia, tinnitus, dizziness, memory change, DNA damage. So, um, Jan, you said very clearly that at night, the body regenerates. And that's true. That's, that's one of the time at night when the body can really rebuild itself. So if we have a night that is not restful, we cannot regenerate as we, we, we could be. So we want to be sure that at night we have a safe place to rest. So how do I know that radiation is affecting my health? So if perhaps if you have uh, looked at all the uh, uh, health impacts um, or symptoms, you, you can perhaps relate to that. Perhaps it's something completely different, but make a note of that. And then some people have reported that when they sleep in a different place, then they start to feel better. And their, septum, their symptoms subside as soon as they came back. Their septum came back. So if you have a second bedroom, you can try your second bedroom, see if, you, if your symptoms change. Um, so, you can book an appointment with me to check your level of radiation uh, you are exposed to and also how much your body absorbs in terms of radiation. Um, we have special tools that allow us to, to check the level of absorption, of absorption that a body absorbs individually. <laughs> um, some people uh, are, can be really affected, and ha have been really affected. Uh, they are actually uh, named electrosensitive people. And when pe people uh, are very sensitive or become extremely sensitive, they have to literally remove themselves, go into the countryside and to actually recuperate. And they can come back but it takes time. They need to, um, to really get back or get back in, in contact with the nature. And as Ian said, uh, you know, you have to walk barefoot on the ground and just be supported by Mother Earth. 
whenever you are using a wireless device, you are exposing yourself to microwave radiation. That's a fact. Um, and let's just keep that in mind. Remedial solution. So, um, first thing I would say to everyone to get wired, to stop the um, radiation coming through your brain. So, particularly, we are at a time when we are teleworking from home, and it has been really sudden. We are in, a, in one room, nobody can get in and out as, you know, we are in an office, we, we just move around. Here, you are in one room, so you need to be sure that the room you are working from is a good space <laughs> where um, you can work, uh, yes, in a good space. So get wired, um, wireless and Bluetooth devices, including cell phone, laptop, tablet, emit radio frequency radiation. And so make sure this is wired. Uh, you can use Ethernet cable, fiber optic, uh, at home to, re to reduce your level of exposure to radiation. In France, the, um, the new house that they're building are uh, mostly built with fiber optic. So uh, different countries, different way of uh, being, but uh, it's interesting to notice this. So distance is your friend. So make sure if you have a router, not to have your router just right to next to you if it's still in <coughs> Wi-Fi. I mean, obviously, uh, better to have it wired, but uh, make sure that it's not too close to your to your body. Actually, as far as you can. Um, so uh, during an EMA visit, I will advise you on various options for protection and router that we have tested. Um, the user that you can find user, it's on my website, that emits a, a very low level of radiation. If you decide to continue to continue using Wi-Fi, then it has a, a, a certain mode that uh, is actually uh, uh, better than others. <laughs> Uh, so we choose a router that can offer 100% uh, radiation free, and that exists. When you have, uh, when you are cabled, um, when you have Ethernet cable, just make sure that uh, the Wi-Fi signal emission is turned off, because often um, people tend to forget that, and it's still radiating. So. Uh, this is something to consider. Um, only connect to the Wi-Fi when you absolutely need it. Uh, distancing yourself as a ways. Uh, make sure that you turn off Bluetooth if you don't use it, obviously. Uh, uh, yes, so that's another thing. And at night, it's when you really you want to have a space that you have no Wi-Fi on, <coughs> everything is switched off, uh, if you can. Uh, so, avoid using your cell phone when the signal is weak. So all these uh, tips that I am giving you, are, it's also for people that have reached the point that they really cannot touch a phone or they really have to take everything in consideration. And you don't want to get to that point. Neither for you, neither for your children, and neither, neither for your elders. Uh, so just make sure that, or just know that when your signal is weak of your phone, the power increases to emit a maximum amount of radiation 
because the phone will keep trying to connect with the nearest work network antenna. So that's something you can keep in mind. Um, some people might laugh about it, might say, oh, no, I'm, you know, I, I want my phone everywhere. That's fine. It's a question of choice. But then once you've got the knowledge, you decide what you want to do. So best is to wait to call from a landline, landline, speak on loudspeaker, in any case away from the body, because if you hold your phone next to your brain, it will have an impact. You can have blocking, uh, <laughs> so EMF blocking cell phone case when you carry your phone around. Uh, just try to avoid using your phone in your car, train or bus. Everybody in the tube with their mobile, it's actually not so good because uh, you have a metallic enclosure. So whenever you have a metallic enclosure, the effect of the radio frequency is magnified. And that's something you should know. So knowledge is power. So next, you can have uh, this also hair tube headset. Um, the air tube, this, this is an air tube component that converts the electrical signal into armless airwave. Um, so this is also a possible option, uh, but obviously if you can speak from the speaker, it's good too, whenever. <coughs> Make sure you put your, your, your phone on airplane mode whenever you don't use it, if you can, and turn off your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth manually. Right, connecting your laptop, tablet, and phone to an Ethernet cable. I just wanted to give you an overall picture of this possibility, and particularly for the children that are using tablets. And I really hope that in school they, they will be uh, trained to use this tablet for children in a safe way. So you can see here you have the tablet and here you have a, a lightning adapter, which we call a, a lightning adapter. And then from this lightning, you connect it to uh, this uh, Ethernet cable here, but you have also an adapter, a, a second USB adapter that will link either your phone or your tablet to an Ethernet cable. This is a switch box. Switch box, you can have different uh, connection with, for your phone or your tablet. So this is completely possible to connect your phone tablet uh, on an Ethernet cable uh, instead of having using Wi-Fi or other modalities. Okay, so before going to bed, again, remove any wireless devices from your bedroom. You don't want to have any interference while you sleep. You really want to have your brain to rest. So again, you know, remove any devices. If you really have to put your phone on flight mode and keep it as far away as possible from where you are. Uh, bed frame, so Jan said it earlier on, the bed frame, the metal bed frame uh, is not a good idea because it acts as an antenna. Uh, for yourself, so you want to avoid that. Um, there's many other things, but uh, having a mattress also that is not containing metals uh, and no static charges, you can have that as well. So when it's due to replacement, for replacement, maybe consider having that kind of mattress and you can contact me as well. <laughs> if you need some advice. Um, in a bedroom, for the body to regenerate at night, Geovital recommends 
that the body should absorb no more than 30 microvolts and above 100 microvolts, shielding should be considered. So you have different things that you can do. You can have shielding panes on the wall and ceiling that can be applied in a bedroom with shielding fabrics for, curt for curtains that deflect the radiations can also be applied. Uh, some people prefer canopies around the bed and that also uh, cut the radiations. We have also demand or secret cutoff that can cut the electricity from the wall. Then I think I have five more minutes to talk about. They are almost finished, so... Okay, so just to round off, uh, this technology called MEMO is uh, addressing uh, geopathic stress and harmonizing EMF. This is something that you plugged in. There's a lot of uh, different devices that MEMO does, but just to give you a, a very quick uh, explanation that when we receive this uh, radiation, when we have radiations, um, what causes us to be not well is the uh, disease information that goes through that field, right? So what Memon does, it creates another wave, uh, a destructive interference wave that, uh, that, as you can see, the, you have this EMF wave, including the disease causes information, and once it's when Memo send out this other interference, then it cancel it out. Um, so, yes, if you want to know more about your environment, please contact me for an EMF visit to find your uh, exposure to the level of radiation where you are. Uh, find out how much radiation your body absorbs and uh, the survey you have, uh, so we identify all the source of radiation in your house. Some you will be really surprised, I think, <laughs> because uh, they might be hidden. Uh, the low frequency radiations, uh, low frequency electric radiation, the high frequency radiation, and the geopathic stress in your room.